are in the captivating gem nested in the eastern part of this country. Boasting of breathtaking natural beauty with its lush green landscape and fertile soils, adorned with vibrant hues of emerald vegetation and home of the majestic rock, this is the magnificent Tororo district. Groundnut farming, a very lucrative business in Uganda, who once done quite well. Welcome to this week's episode of NTV Seeds of Gold, and we are in the land of the Great Rock, Tororo District. Here, we are welcome to the charming scenery of the Geno family farm, where we'll explore the key aspects of groundnut farming, including markets, tips for bountiful harvest, pest and disease management, and how you can get started on this profitable venture. I am joined by Lavan, who is going to take us through um, the venture and the markets, everything we need to know to get started. Thank you for joining us on the show today. So tell us a little bit about this venture. Yeah, thank you very much. We are here doing uh, our granites, and uh, we are doing granites for seed. It's a very lucrative business because there is shortage of seed in the country for quality production of, uh, of granites. Mm. And as you can see in the farm here, this is our demonstration site, and we have got five varieties of granites that are produced by the researchers mm. based in a narrow uh, soroti. Okay. So, Laban, people are going to want to know um, what are the different varieties uh, that you have here and how, um, how, how they can get started. Yeah, so basically here we have uh, five different uh, varieties. And uh, before we went into these varieties, we had uh, the researcher coming to teach us and the community on the issue of seed. So the starting point was uh, to understand what seed is, so that before you go into the venture, you know what you are going uh, into. So we were taught about seed, and uh, when you are going to plant granites, the first question you have to ask yourself is, what is the seed source? Where am I getting the seed from? When the researcher came to teach us, he asked us a question. Uh, when you are going to plant granites, where do you buy your seed from? And most of us say, we buy from the shops, or I buy from the neighbor, or I buy from my previous uh, 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 crop. Now, what he told us that is that that is not seed, that is a cereal. Because seed has got certain characteristics. Seed, you must know the seed source. And more importantly, you must know how many times it has been multiplied. Now, strangely, when it comes to seed of granite and any other uh, crop, you're supposed to use seeds for three years and then discard it. Now, we discovered that one of the mistakes that we make as farmers is that we get seeds that we do not know the source, we get seeds that has expired, and we get seeds that will not give you the profitability out of the venture that you are going through. So what is unique here is that we have got the foundation seed, we are the first people to multiply for the farmers, and we are going to use it for three years and discard. And that means that uh, there are very high chances that you are going to get a profit. And by the way, from the behaviors of our, our granites, it is doing very, very well because they are, they are drought resistant, they are disease resistant, and they are doing extremely well. Why? Because we identified the right seed. And then the second question is, what is the variety that I'm going to plant? And then the third question is, how do I plant? And that is exhibited in this uh, demonstration site. Mm. So the variety that we are planting is called uh, Serenat 14R. Why we are going for Serenat 14R is one, because it is red. Number two, it has a lot of oil content. And number three, it is heavy. So when you plant it, you get a lot of uh, benefits. Uh, in the marketplace. What are some of the things someone should consider uh, as they get started? Apart from getting expertise, uh, what are we looking at? Uh, size of land, where can one get the seedlings and all that? The seed source is very important. So for us with the community, uh, we identified the seed supplier. And by the way, uh, normally quality seed is quite uh, uh, very expensive because then it will give you the quality output that you want. So we decided to get our seed from uh, uh, the researchers, and that is what is called the foundation seed. So we got the foundation seed, which we are going to multiply, and then we sell it uh, to the farmers. So a number of things that you need to consider when you're going into the venture, one of them I've told, told you about is the seed. Number two, the kind of soil that you're going to plant, and number three, the fertility of the soil. So in our venture, we considered all those three things. So number one, we got quality seed. Number two, there's a fertilizer that we are using, which is called uh, alpha and omega. And alpha and omega, it helps to improve on the productivity of the seed. 
And the way this one works basically is uh, we soak our seeds overnight and then the next day we plant. So what that, hap happen, what that helps is that uh, you have quality seed, you back it up with the very good fertilizer and then you apply the agronomy practices and then you are assured of very good output. Mm. So our target here is that uh, when you plant one acre of uh, granites, which takes about 27 uh, kilograms, you are anticipated to get between 30 uh, to 40 uh, bags. Mm. And by the way, the seeds that we are going to sell is about 350,000 uh, for a sack mm. of 42 kilograms, which is not shell. Pest and disease management in genet farming is crucial for maximizing yield and quality. It involves a number of agronomic practices, which Laban vividly explains. When you are planting granites, there's what they call curative and then preventative. So when you're planting granites, they give you what we call the spraying regimes. Mm. So 10 days after you've planted the granites, you start the spraying. And then you spray after every seven days for four weeks. And that will prevent any disease from coming onto the granites. Mm. And in the event that other diseases come there on, then you manage them as per when they come. And for example, when we take you to the field, you'll see uh, our granites performing. After we finished the spraying regime, we were attacked by a strange disease, which we had to sort uh, there and then. So sometimes you prevent, but some diseases come on board as the venture uh, continues. Laban believes that this venture can significantly contribute to the overall social and economic development of the community. He took on the task of sensitizing the people in his community and successfully won over 21 farmers who have embarked on groundnut farming and on this very land are collaborating towards a common goal. This venture we are doing with the community. When we started this journey, we called the community uh, members to come and access the, the free training. And uh, they got training like all of us. And then after that, we invited them to come and join us in the, in the granite production. So we provided, for them, uh, we provided them with the seed, we provided them with the, with the land, and we are all producing granites. So we are 22 farmers uh, from the community who are doing this as a joint venture. And the community in this, co in this area we have about 120 members who have joined this venture and they already know everything about granites. So the A to Z of granites, they already know. They know how to identify the seed, they know how to prepare the garden, they know how to plant, they know how to spray, and they know how to manage the crop. Mm. So we already have a group of experts who can manage granites. And why we are doing this is uh, we want to improve on the livelihood in our communities. Yeah. Uh, what's the, the period, the moment you plant to the, to the market? Yeah, the, the granites that we have planted, it takes uh, 90 days. It takes 90 days from the time of planting. Mm. So within 90 days, we shall harvest. Then we manage the, the, the post-harvest management, and then we shall be ready to sell in the marketplace. Oh, okay. so do you help the other farmers sell as well? Yes, we are going to sell as a, as a unit. Yes. Uh, because one of the challenges that the farmers have been facing is exploitation by the middlemen. So for us, uh, the 22 farmers who have planted 22 acres, we are going to manage our crop very well, we are going to package them very well, and we are going to sell as a community. Mm. And uh, the researcher who is also helping us is already helping us with identifying the market. The district of Tororo, they will be buying our our seeds for other farmers, so we are not going to be exploited. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So say somebody wants to join the, the venture and become the 23rd farmer. So if you want to join and become the 23rd farmer, is uh, we start with the knowledge. Mm. Uh, one of the mistakes that people make in agriculture is lack of knowledge. And that is what we want to address. People do agriculture with a lot of ignorance. For us, we are coming in to give you the, the, the knowledge. We, 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 we identify the right seed for you. Uh, we give you all the skills that you require and then you join the board. Without that, we cannot take you because we don't want you to make losses. Mm. Uh, so many people have made losses in agriculture and we don't want you to be the next victim. When it gets hot in Tororo, yeah. it gets hot. How do you deal with that during the dry season? That is very true and most farmers, we face that challenge. We've got a little bit of irrigation in the farm. Uh, the district has supported us to give us one acre of irrigation under the U-Gift uh, facility. And also the Minister of uh, Water has done a survey. They are going to give us a irrigation scheme, which will be coming, uh, I think, before the end of this year. Mm. We shall be having water points in all our plots. Until that, it is now just we keep uh, praying that uh, the rains come. <laughs> but um, I believe when you visit us next year, you'll find when this place, all these places are under irrigation. So that is one of the challenges that we face, the issue of uh, the weather. Well, I guess, just like me, you would like to go around and see what the farm has to offer. Join us.
this is a Serenat 14R, yeah. the one that we have planted as seed uh, on 22 acres of land. Yeah. We have chosen Serenat 14R because uh, one, it is red yeah. uh, and people love red granites. Uh, number two, it has got a lot of oil content. Yeah. So if you're producing granites for oil, this is the variety and it's also heavy. Yeah. And uh, it is interesting in that we have been trained on how to plant. Uh, for example, when you are planting these granites, from one row to the next is 50 centimeters, mm. and from one plant to the next is uh, that uh, 15 centimeters. Mm. And we have calculated that a, a kilogram of seed has about 2,503 seed, and uh, one acre takes about 27 kilograms, and that means that in an acre you are having a population of over 26,000 uh, plants. Mm. And when you plant it in this format, then it is very easy for you to manage in terms of uh, spraying, in terms of uh, uh, weeding and in terms of also identifying uh, NSE crop. Okay. So it makes farming very sweet, it makes farming very, very easy, easy because it is in order and also because it is mathematical. You have to calculate, you have to put numbers into the business so that it can come out for you. Yeah, so let me just show you a sample of our Serenat 14R. Okay. Let me just uproot this. Oh. <laughs> wow. Can you look at this? Can you see this? This is amazing. This, this is just is about uh, two months and four days. There are over 80 pods here. And so we anticipate that uh, this will be a very good yield mm. and that our farmers will produce very good seed uh, for the market. This, this is going to be real good. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, it's amazing. They look healthy. So it's no longer about the size of land that you have, yeah. but it's about how you manage your plant in a very small piece of uh, land and can give you uh, output. We have got there uh, narrow, narrow nut, mm -hmm. one arrow, which is that one there. That's yeah. a different variety. So it has also different characteristics. What are, what are its parks? What's, what's so good about it? Uh, this one, it is, uh, first of all, it, it, it matures early. Mm. It matures early uh, and it also gives you a good output. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the, the, the market demand, this one, uh, uh, Serenat 14 arrow, is more required than, uh, than this one. Yeah. So this other one is Serenat. Uh, 11 T, we have Serenat 11 T, then we have Serenat 9 T, and then the last one on this side is Serenat 8 R. So these are all different varieties of granites. Uh, they have got uh, different characteristics, and some of them have also got different maturity uh, period. In our project here, we have uh, about five women groups, and uh, so after taking the women through the training, after them planting the granites in the demonstration site where we came, from, they came here and put their knowledge into practice. So this very plot belongs to one of the women groups. And as you can see, the women are organized, the women are very detailed, and this is what they have produced. So in here we have uh, nine acres, and of the nine acres, this is one of the best plots. As you can see, uh, they, 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 they planted the, the, the granites in very straight line. They have managed uh, the weeding, they have also sprayed, and they're managing the crop and we believe that they're going to get a very good uh, output out of this uh, uh, plot. Hmm. We will take a short commercial break and when we return, it's the expert opinion and the market. Groundnuts have a significant market demand in Uganda, making it a promising crop for farmers. Additionally, one can consider exporting one's produce to neighboring countries like Kenya, Tanzania, and South Sudan, which have a high demand for ginuts. Getting started on groundnut farming can be a rather exciting journey and quite manageable, as Laban explains. The journey of granite starts from here. This is a, this is seed. This is seven at 14, and this is the granite that we plant. And uh, having planted, then you harvest. After harvesting, then you manage the post-harvest uh, management. And then after that, you may choose to add value. Mm -hmm. So here at Geno Farm, we have added value uh, on our granites, and here are different uh, product ranges that we have. So Sheila, this is for example. Uh, peanut butter. Mm. This is peanut butter. Uh, we have added value from here. We have the machinery to do that. And this alone goes for 10,000 shillings. 
Uh, so ordinarily you'd sell the granites maybe at five or six thousand if you're a farmer who's producing for the marketplace. But when you add value, you can see it's almost increasing by 50%. We have also got granites which are packaged and ready for you to fry uh, at home and eat. It is well sorted. And for this one, we sell it at 8,000 uh, shillings. Mm -hmm. And then the other product we have is uh, uh, this one. This one is uh, granite, which is, uh, which is like flour. <coughs> and this one is also ready for use. We are selling this one at 6,500. And the last product that those people cannot wait, they already want to eat the granites. That is this one, which is fried, already fried and ready to be eaten. This one goes for 10,000 shillings. Okay. So these are the product ranges that we have. Yes. And value addition is where the money is. And we already have these on the market? We already have this in the market. Okay. Yeah. For example, uh, there are many people <coughs> from the community who instead of going 22 kilometers to the city to buy these granites, they can now come and buy from here. In that mm. way, they are saving uh, themselves the stress of uh, uh, transport and they can make more money. Yeah. So they instead can access it from uh, the farm here. Okay. So let's, let's tell us about the machinery. Yeah, so the machinery that we use here uh, locally are produced by some of the action in Kampala. Uh, so take, for example, the one that makes uh, this one and the other one, these two. Yeah. The machinery goes for about uh, 3 million shillings and you can get uh, started. But also we have the machine that helps with the removing the skin of the granites. Mm -hmm. So take, for example, after frying these uh, granites, you take it through the machine to remove the skin. Mm -hmm. That one goes for about 2.5 million <coughs> and you're ready to start. So you fry the granites, you remove the skin, and then it gives you this uh, output. Yeah. So 3.5 and uh, 3 million, that's about 5.5. You're ready to add value and uh, make money. So we are going to show you how we add value to one of our products and that product is the granite powder which is uh, this one here. This is a value added uh, product that we produce here. So after you have harvested your granites, you have stored it very well, you want to add value. What we do here at the farm is we use this machine. So you get the granite pods and pour it in this machine and then you manually you know, swing so that you can thrash the granites. So after this then uh, you sort and you are ready to put in the machine. So you get the granites and then you pour it into the grinder and then you cover uh, then they'll put on the power takes about two to three minutes and the product is ready Welcome to this segment of the Expert Opinion. So today I'm with Mr. Olo, an agriculture officer tasked with about four zones, um, this one inclusive. It's nice to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Okay, so we've seen, um, we've seen the enterprise uh, of Jeanette on this, on this farm. Um, what are some of the challenges that a farm like this would face? Well, the part of the challenge that a farm like this would face, I, I haven't seen by you today. One is the dry spell that come amid is the in the middle of the rain. Yeah. The some week and sometimes it affects at a critical stage. For example, now our granites are poddy. We need moisture and we have this two weeks dry spell. Yeah. It will affect the formation of seeds inside the pods and this and the size, so the quality at the end. Yeah, so one would have to manage it. How? Possibly if there was irrigation would be much better. But you can see the scale is big for the irrigation we have. Mm. The the uh, twenty two acres. So it to irrigate it may need some other efforts. Yes. Yes. Okay, I see. However, why you see it like that because we used fertilizer. During planting mm. we used organic fertilizer liquid which we soak the seeds and then it gave it vigor mm. from germination to grow very fast yeah. then we have also applied foliar on the leaves yes. and treating it well so that it does not suffer any other problems apart from now this this natural one which we cannot do what 
You cannot That's about it. I see. So what are some of uh, the pests and diseases that um, such a farm would face and what are some of the solutions you have for said issues? The most challenging disease in granite is granite rosette. Normally, local people mis mistake it to be like misfortune. They say that <laughs> the granite has quoted, but now it is called stunted. So when rosette attacks the granite, it remains stunted. From the time it attacks it, it will remain there. So grant gets started, so it will not put pods, so you will not get any good yield. Now this granat rosette is connected to, because it is a viral disease. Viral disease is spread through vector. There must be something which will bring it. Mm -hmm. It will not come by itself. So the pest which, the pest which bring the rosette is called amphids. Yeah. So once amphids, uh, comes and sucks the, the sap, the, the granite sap, it injects in the virus which gives it granite rosette disease. Mm. Therefore, for you to manage the rosette, you have to manage the amphids yeah. at earliest stage possible. First of all, you have to be timely. Two, you need to spray with the pesticide that are broad spectrum. Mm. Broad spectrum means it has both both uh, curative, killing, and it, it is also systemic. When you spray, it goes into the tissue of the plant. Mm. So in case the, it did not get in contact with the pest, immediately the pest try to, to suck, to eat. Mm. Yeah? It finds it in the system, so it kills it. Two, when you are spraying at that very time of, of, of spraying, when it gets into contact with it, it will also kill it instantly. Mm. Two or three, it must have repellent property. The repellent property, the chemical people now put that strong smell. That strong smell has the repellent property in that when you spray granite, it can smell for three to five days. Mm. What does it help? The neighboring garden, where possible, they didn't spray. The pest is there. Mm. When they plan to shift to this one, they will smell the chemical and say, ah, that side, it's a no-go zone. So you, you spray with those chemicals, with those three properties, mm. but it must be timely. The chemical we used here, we used the Bimaphos. And the, the second week we used the, the Ethoyet. And, the, and then the third spray, we added the, the fungicide called the, called the Mistress. Now the fungicide will help us to, to avoid the fungal infections. What are some of the agronomic practices or aspects one should consider before getting uh, into this venture and during then after to ensure uh, that even the next yield, uh, the next will yield? Thank you. Uh, we have talked about the spraying. That's part of beauty. Mm. Before it should be seed selection. Okay. You must know which seed are you planting and where are the source. For example, as here the source was from Sereri. Mm. We got the first generation seeds for multiplication. So this one which people grow is going to be multiplied as seeds. Yeah? So, when you have identified the seeds, you identify the field. Mm. Where are you going to plant? When you finish planting your granites, the thing is spraying. Now, weeding. You have to do, you, you have to do weeding twice. Now you have done the weeding, you wait to, to harvest. During harvesting, you must have tapling for drying. Post harvest handling will also be a key and must be a key. Market is open for the granites. Yeah. I am telling you, as we talk now, there are people already moving, even buying from the garden. So that's our show for today. Thank you so much for watching. Next week, we are still in the great land of Tororo. Don't forget to keep the comments coming in. Hashtag NTV Seeds of Gold. Have a nice day. Te uh, to forty up. Uh. On a mission to find the farmers. <laughs> <laughs>